welcome to the first pilot of uh, Let's Talk 2500 MZBC. I have these wonderful young adults with me. We have Ambria, Nadia, Amari, and Aaron all here. And we, we're just going to talk some Bible and some real life discussion. I'm thanking them greatly for their time spent. So we're going to go around and let them introduce themselves. We're going to start with Ambria. So Ambria, please start. Hello, uh, my name is Ambria, and um, I am currently a U.S. Navy retired vet. Um, I currently attend Norfolk State University, and um, I am currently living in the state of Virginia. Nice. Amari? I'm Amari. I go to Western Michigan University right now. Uh, currently, I reside in the state of Michigan. All right. Nadia? I am Nadia. Um, I currently attend Illinois State University, and I reside in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. All right, Mr. Aaron. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Aaron. I am presently, um, <clears throat> well, I guess you could say I have recently relocated to Portland, Oregon. Um, currently, I am working in um, the behavioral health field, uh, making a transition in jobs right now. Um, and I am a former student of Jackson State University. School district. So, um, with that being said, um, let's see here. Proverbs three and six is our discussion. Proverbs three and six. Can you all still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Proverbs three and six is our discussion and it states and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So uh, let's dive into this. What? Give me y'all input, y'all feedback. What does the scripture mean to you all? What, what are you gleaning from it when you first hear it? You know, we got this diversity, right? College, Navy, uh, professionalism of uh, you guys have, oh, 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 and Aaron did not state, but he is a, a PK, a preacher's kid. So uh, we just go, <laughs> we going to get his feedback as well because, and it's a unique because what I've learned of, of other preachers' kids is that you grow up in church and people just expect you to be churchy. And then when you go out on your own, you have to live your own life, but then you have to experience Christ in your way. And so we definitely want to get some of Aaron's feedback while he is with us. So Amari, start us off. What are, what are you hearing about Proverbs 3 and 6? First thing, just no matter what, trust God. Okay. Um, this It sounds very simple, but it's so hard to put into action because the older that I've gotten, I've seen how situations seem bigger than I think that I'm able to conquer. And so it makes me really rely on God rather than what my senses might be telling me in the moment. Okay. Nadia. For me, I feel like it always is a constant reminder that I probably do need to do better in kind of going to him and making sure I do acknowledge him in every way. So like, even if it's like, you know, a small decision, like, oh, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? Mm -hmm. um, I do need to keep this verse in the back of my head a lot more often and kind of um, understand that he will direct my path. And that if I do acknowledge him, that it'll make the path e easier and make choosing a path easier. Okay, Aaron? Um, initially, when I look at Proverbs 3 and 6, I like jump to Proverbs three and five before I go to Proverbs three and six. Just okay. because it's the precursor, like it's the message before, it's the it's the acknowledgement before the understanding, and it says, "Lean not into thine own understanding." Um, you know, and so I think just honestly, before you even begin to just begin to think about acknowledging God and thinking about the ways that he would direct your path, you have to know that you have to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. And I think trust is very big, not only in, you know, just in trusting God, but trust in real life is important too. Um, so with that, I think that um, not only do we have to acknowledge that God will direct our paths, should we you know, pray and seek that knowledge and seek that wisdom. But I think we need to know that we have to trust because not only in acknowledging, but you have to trust that, you know, 
the older you get, your decisions are 15 minute decisions. You know, you decide, OK, well, you know, right now, mom said, you know, go wash the clothes. I didn't go wash the clothes. You know, when she gets home, I'll get in trouble. But, you know, the older you get, you go, OK, well, I got a speeding ticket. I decided not to pay that speeding ticket. Now this has affected my driver's license. So I think the older you get, you you put more acknowledgement into what is actually acknowledging God to trust your path and just knowing that every day it's not an easy decision or it's not like, uh, you know, a straight in your face decision, but you have to know that praying to God and understanding like, you know, my pray that I, my prayer that I pray daily is God, whatever your will is, let it be done. Because in some points, like I don't have a decision to make. You know, I just, I can't make the best decision for myself, but I know that praying and seeking wisdom and seeking knowledge from God, who we, you know, acknowledge has all power. I think that is what gives us or gives me the strength to believe and to acknowledge that God will direct my path. Okay. And Bria? All right. Um, so I'm going to have to say that um, I too, um, when reading, when I receive any scripture, um, I always go to the one before it and then the one after as well. Um, so I can get a full understanding of the in between or what it is actually is that um, has been given to me. So first thing is when knowing that we're reading from the book of Proverbs, um, the book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom, right? So um, automatically I um, receive that I'm about to gain something from it, um, some wisdom so that I can be able to um, make sound decisions uh, moving forward. So um, as I already stated, the verse five is trust in the Lord with from the NIV version is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Six is in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. And then seven is do not be wise on your own eyes, fear the Lord and shun evil. Um, so again, bringing everything all together from what everyone has already said, um, when we acknowledge God for who he is, who is the mm -hmm. author, um, the um, creator of all things, he has written all of our stories. So he already knows the outcome, right? He has this perfect plan for us. So all he wants us to do is to trust that his plan is perfect for us. And as long as we understand that, although we may not actually see what the plan is, um, mm -hmm. All we have to do is understand it. And the path is already straight. We just have to trust that he's going to guide us through that path. Okay. So in my notes and listening to some of what you all are responding and you're, you right on target with, you know, you, you all use things like every day. You, I like how Aaron and, and Bria, you noted the context. You look at the verse before and the verse after to get the, the whole depth of what, what you're studying about, but let's, let's, let's break it down. And just non-Bible, okay? Let's let's look at it non-Bible. So, what does it mean to acknowledge? What does it mean to acknowledge? Anybody? What does it mean to acknowledge? Um, I think um, if I had to define acknowledge without using the word acknowledge, um, I would say to make aware of. So, okay. um, to point out, to notice um, is what I get when I hear the word acknowledge. Okay. Who else? Um, I would say Go ahead. Go ahead. I would say in this context to invite God because seeing how there's so many things that go into verse six, it's like you to understand who he is, you have to be able to like back up sometime and submit to him. Just say, I don't know what's going on, but God, your God, I know that you know uh, what's going to happen, whatever the outcome is. It also makes us uh, aware of his nature, his history with us, seeing that God can take us from situation to situation, being able to acknowledge that the same God then is the same God now. Aaron? Um, I would say acknowledge means to identify and or respect. Um, if I acknowledge you as, you know, a certain type of person or a certain type of relationship in my life, then I identify and or I respect that, um, just the person or the title that the, or the relationship that there is. Nadia? I would say um, acknowledge is to bring like direct attention to. Okay, so when you when you all use those terms, as again when we when you talk Bible, it's you you have to know you have people who know Christ and people who don't know Christ, people who know Bible and people who don't know Bible. So when we look at just the word acknowledge, you guys use words like notice, identify, and attention. 
And that's significant because when we look at Proverbs 3 and 6, it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge God or acknowledge him. So when we acknowledge him, we give him attention, we give him notice, and we identify that he is in our lives. To acknowledge someone is just to recognize that they are present. When you acknowledge someone, you identify that they are present. And watch this, when it comes to God, in your life, not just in the building, not just at home, not just at the movies, not just while you drive in your car, because the, the pretext of the scripture says, in all thy ways, so that you acknowledge God, that he's present, that he's noticeable in your life, that you identify him and you have given him attention in all of your ways. So those who are watching and listening to us who, who see this scripture and also see verse five, and we're going to bring that in there, we have to know what acknowledge means. And so God just says, hey, recognize that I'm present. Notice me. Identify that I am with you in your life. So college, job, Navy, at the school, in the church, in the community, hanging out with friends, acknowledge me. So what's that acknowledgement? That acknowledgement could be grace. It don't always require us being on our knees. We can't get on our knees all the time. Sometimes driving a car, in a classroom, in a meeting, working with colleagues, at the gym. And so when you recognize him in your life, you are giving him notice. So that's why I want to break down that that those words without Bible, because somebody is watching and listening. And it's like, OK, what does it mean to acknowledge God? It means that you take notice of him. And then all of you include me and others. We do that with just grace. We do that waking up. We do that going to bed. We do that all throughout our day. So when we look at Proverbs three and six and it says in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So Nadia, what is the direction? Give me a definition of direction. What does direction mean? Like a way, like a path. Um, yep. Yep. You on track. You on track. Help her out. Somebody help her out. Mari, help her out. Well, uh, yeah, simply how Nadia said, keeping the path to find, like, if I'm trying to decide between this job and this job or this college and this college, like not stressing about the situation. And realizing that sometimes closed doors are God's way of like leading our direction. Things okay. that we thought should have, you know, like I should have been accepted into this school. I should have gotten this job offer, but I still haven't. And I okay. can say that even though, you know, it's not working out how I wanted to work out, God is still leading me exactly where I need to go. Okay. Or, and Bria? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Mari. Go ahead, finish. I was going to say, even feeling stuck sometimes, sometimes just acknowledging I'm where I'm at, exactly where God wants me to be. I like how you said that, acknowledging, taking notice. And that's, that's what I want to keep driving because, see, in all thy ways, acknowledge. That's the key, acknowledge, because even with verse five, you know, leaning not to your own understanding, but you have to know that you got somebody else that you have to acknowledge, because if I can't lean to my understanding, who am I leaning to? You got to have somebody you can acknowledge. It's great that we don't lean to our own understanding, but then who do we lean to? And so verse six comes in and it says who you need to acknowledge for that understanding. Give me give me some more information on direction and Bria and Aaron. Um, direction uh, for me is guidance. Um, so in anything, you know, when you have someone directing you, um, directing traffic or directing the choir, um, directing the orchestra, whatever it is, there's always someone in the front that is actually, um, y'all like that choir thing, huh? We all choir members. <laughs> <laughs> um, to actually give guidance and what the next steps should be, what the next note should be. Like there's always someone in front to let you know that this is the next thing that you need to be doing. So direction is guidance. Um, so acknowledging that you need the guidance from God and with guidance from God is where you understand um, exactly what's the next step to do, um, what's the next thing you need to be doing. Um, so in the acknowledging, it's always um, seeking guidance from him so that you can actually um, be going down the right path that he has already set for you. Okay, Aaron. 
Um, I agree with everything that has been said um, before me. Um, and I'll just add that um, direction basically ends up with a location. You know, there, there's an end goal. There is somewhere where we're supposed to get. You know, you get up in the morning, you get in your car. If you go into a new place, if you don't, if you're not going to a new place, there's a direction. You get on your GPS and you know that I'll be here in 30 miles. I'll be here in 15 miles. At the end of the day, we're looking to God to show us not the best path or the left, the past, the path, excuse me, of least resistance, but the path that is going to, to fine tune us for the end result, for the end goal. You know, um, direction, it, it encompasses all those things. It encompasses the course. It encompasses, you know, the route in which we should take. It encompasses us seeking God and seeking um, seeking direction, seeking guidance, seeking um, wisdom, seeking advice. But at the end of the day, the direction is nothing without the end goal. You know, what prepares us for the end goal. Okay, you all y'all hit it right on the head. Direction can be lines in the street telling you when to merge, when to turn, and when you can go around. Direction can be a turn signal. Direction can be an exit sign. Direction can be a stoplight. Direction is anything that's pointed you in a way or where you're trying to get to. So when we take this scripture and now we take all those points, we say, acknowledge God. Let's notice him. Let's identify with him. Let's give him attention. Let's let, let's recognize that he is present in our lives. And then all of our ways, not just at church, on the job, in the classroom, in the community, in relationships, you know, in our health. Um, Aaron just moved, right? In that direction, the end point, right, where he's at, he seeked God for that direction. And so now we have all our ways, acknowledge him for his direction so he can point us. And I like how y'all use GPS because that's that's exactly it. It tells you when to turn left, when to turn right, because none of us can see up the road. None of us can see around the corner. None of us can see over the hill. And that doesn't mean, you guys tell me in your experiences, because even when you get that direction, even when you know where you're going and your end point, that doesn't mean that you're not going to face obstacles. Even getting to that end point, that does not mean, and I'm saying this specifically for people who may not know Christ or even those who are in Christ, that does not mean that you may not have some roadblocks, you know, that you may not have some, some setbacks, but you know, I like how Aaron said it, that end point that you're going to get to. And so share with me, you all, some of your, um, you know, as the Holy Spirit guides you, share with me some maybe an experience that you had where you acknowledged God and you're glad you did or when you didn't and, and the, and the results of that. So let's start, uh, Amari, start us out with that. Share us with, share something that may, may help somebody to understand this scripture a little bit more. So, um, deciding to come to Western Michigan uh, for college, I never even, I never even, thought that I would end up in this program or at this school, it wasn't top, like high on my list at all. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the schools I had applied to had already accepted me and let me know scholarship opportunities as well. And so I was dead set on the school that I thought I was going to. And then um, I ended up uh, hearing about the school one last time. So I decided I might as well visit it um, since it's so close. And I did auditioned and fell in love with the school and didn't even think I would. I just came just to see what was here. And um, making the decision to move here, even though it wasn't necessarily what I initially expected, I really had to lean in trusting God's direction because the other schools, uh, some of my friends ended up going to, and after hearing about it, I wouldn't have been the happiest there, nor would I have felt challenged enough. I wouldn't have grown as much as I have. Um, compared to moving to Western. Okay. So I would say that I really leaned on God and determined what college to go to. So from a college standpoint, and, and all of you can speak to this, but especially from a college standpoint, because, you know, you're at home with mom and dad, you're following their rules. I like, uh, I think it was Aaron earlier who said, you know, get the dishes washed, right? But now, you know, and that's, that's, 
a small decision, 15 minutes. Now <laughs> you college bound, you're on your own. And that decision that you make is not just 15 minutes, you know, impact. It's 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 can be a semester, two weeks, a month, you know. And so now you understand more. I I, I believe Aaron said it earlier to acknowledge God and how you grow and you mature and you begin to understand his impact in your daily life and how that acknowledgement, that, that simple, how'd y'all say it? I like these words y'all use to identify that Christ is with you and just pause, just pause for a minute and just say, okay, Lord, I need your help. I think Bria said it earlier when she talked about wisdom, Lord, and, and wisdom is divine insight on every situation in your life. I mean, you can't get no better than that. When you acknowledge an all-wise, all-knowing God and you have divine insight and all you got to do is ask for it and, and he present, right? Okay. All right. Keep going. Come on, Aaron. Um, I, I don't know. Let me see. I feel like I've had a lot of experiences where I've had to trust God for direction and just trust God for understanding. But what I will say is um, before I make any decision now, I know that I have to pray. You know, um, I know, you know, before, you know, being 16 and you just being like, well, I'm just about to jump off the porch and do whatever I'm going to do. Now it's more so like a, I got to pray. And mm -hmm. in the praying, you also got to wait because sometimes the answer don't come like as soon as you get done praying and you just like, Eureka, there's my answer. I'm going to get, you know, you got to like, sometimes you got to sit and wait and you like, oh, man, I got to call mama, you know, man, I got to call grandma. I got to, I got to call my sister, you know, you turn around and then, you, you know, one day you're talking to your niece and your niece go, uncle, you know, Doritos are better than, and you'd be like, they're going to answer right there. You know, and you had to sit and you had to wait. But, you know, there were things that were going on in that time. And so I, along with direction and along with um, leaning not into your own understanding, there's timing. You know, so I feel like um, in my experiences, it's always, you know, knowing that there is that there's timing in which, you know, things are going to happen. It's not about it's not always about the where or the how. It's sometimes it's about the when. Yeah. Yeah, you spot on with that. Come on, Nadia. Y'all, come on. I got them juices flowing now. Come on. For me, um, mine is also with college experience. I feel mm -hmm. like my relationship with God has grown tremendously ever since I did move to college because I've been on my own and I tried to lean on to my own understanding and clearly that's not the way. So one major like example would be my internship like I felt really lost trying to find a good internship that would work for me because I am like kind of like on the more timid side and quiet and um this is like the first year we have to really like use what we learned throughout these two years or three years um and it was really hard but I prayed on it and I feel like God gave me the answer to where I am now and it's like the perfect fit. It's like a shoe. It fits perfectly for me. I love it there. And if I had not really been praying on it, meditating on it, I think I would have made the wrong choice. But still to this day, I'm really glad that I did. And that's like a really big example of me praying and getting an answer. Okay. Bria? All I'm right. Bria. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, we family. Um, so... Crazy thing is, I want to um, add on a little bit to what Aaron was saying, where he mm -hmm. said, um, um, when you pray, you have to wait. But in the waiting, we also have to work, right? So it says, acknowledge him and he showed the record path. So that's the work. You have to acknowledge him. You can't lean on your own understanding. That's us. That's an action. That's us doing that. So for me, it's my current situation right now. Um, I am literally just new to being a retired Navy vet. Um, and for me, that is a huge thing because, um, I literally, um, we all come from the same family and we all grew up in this environment where we were sheltered. We grew up in religion, um, love God, know God, 
be proud black people. Like we all were this thing, like um, yeah. the direction was given to us from big mama, right? Like we all know that she gave us the direction and you go with it. Um, but of course her direction came from God, right? But we weren't, we weren't seeing that outside of that. It was just her and move on. Whatever mama said, that's what we do. Whatever dad said, that's what you do. Whatever the aunt said, that's what you do. Um, and then from that, I joined the military at the age of 17, I joined the military and now here it is 11 years later. And it's like, Hey, so crazy thing after having a life, the first 29 years of your life of being straight, this is what you do. All right. I go and do it. And that's it. Now you're getting the chance at the age of 29 to start making the adult decisions for yourself where it's um, not mama said, do it. So go do it. Or um, now it's uh, the military, your supervisor, the captain, your boss, or whatever it is, said, go do this. You put on this uniform, you wear this, and you get there on this time, you do your job, that's it. Now I come to a place where it's like, well, who is Ambria? Because I've never been a civilian as a dog. So um, being transparent, when I found out my last date, boy, when I say I was like, oh, this is real. Um, I, I began to cry. I had a slight panic attack. And then as I sat in my driveway, I'm in my car, um, I just began to think because it was just me. And I, I didn't want to be a burden to somebody else trying to call them in the middle of the day and just like, oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? Um, I sat there. I began to pray. I began to worship in my car. I turned on my worship music and I just began to like um, get myself into the presence of God. Right. And while I was sitting there, um, the scriptures that we were taught as a kid came back to me and it said, um, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed breaking bread acknowledged him, path directed right then and there. And Brie, you have no reason to be afraid of what's about to come because my path has already been set for you. I have not ever had you to beg before. So why would I start now? All right. All right. And if I can yeah. just jump in, come on, come on. right there. Um, again, and you know, because I'm in the middle of transition as well, um, that has been a, you know, that has been a recurring scripture in my I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I have not brought you this far to leave you right here with no options or with, you know, with nothing better for it to happen for you. I, you gotta, like, I literally pray each and every day. You know, you used to be like, oh my God, why do we pray so much? Why do we pray so much in church? They teach you to pray in church because they want you to know that that prayer got to get higher than the ceiling. So you got to know, you got to acknowledge God in those prayers. You got to acknowledge God in everything that you're doing each and every day. I am, I kid you not, that right there, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. If that's not acknowledgement of God, right there in those words. I have never been left alone. I have never been left starving. I have never been left homeless. I have never been left without clothes. I have never been left without shelter. I have never been left outside the grace and the will and the covering of God. And that right there, that comes from acknowledgement. I just wanted to put that that's in the, That's the preacher's job, y'all. That's, that's the preacher's job. <laughs> Sharing his testimony with us. That, you know, but the experience... Cause, and I like how you all said it, raised up in church, right? You, you, your path was laid out for you. But as you branch out and you move to your other levels of life, you have to develop, and I say this all the time, a personal relationship with Christ. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, cousins can all share with you and tell you. But when you get in some of them experiences, on your own, Bria, like she said, worshiping in the car, you have to draw on what was taught to you, but then you have to also develop that personal relationship because I, I like how you state it. And it's not that you can't call someone else, but you know, every now and then you need to have that connection. It's not always about picking up the phone, calling someone else. You need to be developed. I think Aaron said it earlier. It's about timing and waiting because you can acknowledge God on Monday, but that don't mean he going to answer Tuesday. <laughs> It might, it might be a whole month later that you hear. And I like how Aaron stated that, that in talking with his niece, you know, God talks to us through so many avenues. And if we're not paying attention, we'll miss it. You'll be talking to grandma. You'll be talking to a cousin, somebody who don't even know what you're praying on. And they'll say something and you'll be like, oh, and it'll register with you. And you'll know that it is God. You know, Nadia, as she talked about college and finding her her place and acknowledging God. And she said it was the perfect fit. So this is the question I want to pose to you all. 
Um, and and I I like. Let me add this: the prayer, because you know, prayer is talking to God, but it's a monologue. It ain't just us doing all the talking, right? It's us being quiet so that we can hear from Him. But being always, you know, they always say you should always pray, and so you should always pray. But we should always be in a position or an attitude of prayer. But prayer is not just in the morning and at night, because if God needs to get to you at two o'clock, you, you know, yeah. So you always have to have an attitude of prayer where you are open to hear from heaven and God can deposit and talk to you because it's not just in the morning. It's not just at night. If I'm on my job and I'm going into a meeting at three o'clock and God needs to get something to me because he know what I can't see. He know what's going to be said that I don't know. And so when he deposits that in me, so now I go into that meeting and now I'm prepared. And then the Holy Spirit quickens me what to say and how to respond. And so we always have to have be in an attitude of prayer so that we can receive. Because a lot of Christians just think prayer is when you say in your food, first thing when you wake up in the morning, and then when you go at night. But then what if God needs So let's pick up. Now, uh, Aaron talked about his niece. And giving him information, giving uh, responding to him, and that was the answer that he was looking for. He talked about timing and weight. Nadia spoke on a perfect fit. So this is the question I want. I really want to close with. After you, you understand verse five. You can't lean to your own understanding. So if I can't lean to my own understanding, verse six tells me who I need to lean to, right? And how I need to acknowledge him. So the question I want to go around to say: How do you know is God? You got all this information coming at you, you know, social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, grandma, grandpa, mama, daddy, sister, brother. You got all these opinions and, and you may call and ask and talk and discuss. And there's nothing wrong with calling and reaching out. But how do you know it's God? And Bria, let's start with you. Oh, how do you know it's God the direction? We can okay. pass it if you're not ready. No, I got it. So crazy thing is. Um, as a kid growing up, I, I just knew for a fact that hearing God was like literally like an audible, right? So, um, oh, I really thought that, I am yeah, <laughs> like, you know, how, um, watching Lion King and every time Mufasa talked to Simba, he was like, Simba. So uh -huh. I really, yeah. really thought that that's how God was going to talk to me. Like, Ambria. Okay. Boom. Like, I, I, there was no way that I was going to miss it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then reality sets in, and it's like, yeah, that was Disney. Mm -hmm. um, and in real life, there is no, you know, megaphone or bullhorn from heaven screaming down to you. Like, um, again, you pray, but you also have to make, not only are you communicating, you're talking to God, but you have to make sure that you, your ears, your spiritual ears are open so that you can hear him. Um, the word says, my sheep knows my voice. So one, identifying God, making a relationship with God allows you to know his voice so that when um, anything else is talking to you um, or you hear other things, whether it be you talking to somebody else and it sounds like, oh, yeah, that could be the answer. Or, you know, you see something because it's not always just a word. It could be literally uh, um, a sight, something that just come across, boom, that's the answer. Um, but either way it goes, it comes down to when you know God's voice, you know God's voice. And when you hear from God, specifically him, nothing else, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about it that this is the answer right here. Like you never have to question whatever the actual answer from God is. You never have to question, is that you, God? Because again, it's the perfect fit. Like it answers everything that you ask for and even the things that you didn't even say out loud. Like, boom, that's how you know for real. Like I asked for a truck, but I didn't say black, right? I just said the truck, boom, black truck. Down to okay. literally like the stitching in the leather of the seat. Like, okay, God, I see you. <laughs> now, I like how you say that. <laughs> I like how you say that. It's a voice. But I got to bring Aaron in on this because I was just talking to Aaron yesterday and he talked about uh, his move and, and understanding when it is God. And he kind of hit on some of those things. So, Aaron, share with us how you know that it was God. Um, well, like I said before, um, a lot of things that 
a lot of, for me, a lot of things is timing. Um, I think because, um, you know, life is like, um, life is your own path. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I was just explaining to my coworker the other day, like you go like this and then you learn a lesson and until you learn that lesson, you'll still be going like this. But then once uh-huh. you get that lesson, then you, you know, you can continue going. But if you get stuck again, like you'll, you'll be in that circle, keep going again. So I think um, a lot of things for me are timing, but I'll just tell you all this. I have been um, basically working in the Portland, Oregon area since last November. Um, I took a leave of access for my job. And I took a traveling contract to come work um, in mental health, behavioral health um, in Oregon. Uh, I worked for the same company and I just was kind of like, you know, like it's making sense. So why, you know, shake things up? Um, And then they were getting to the point like, okay, we don't think we're going to renew you guys past this certain date. And I started thinking like, well, if I go home, like, what am I going to do? Right. And so I was kind of like teetering on the decision of, well, what should I do? Should I go back home or should I stay? Like, because eventually, like, I need, you know, I need to make sure that I have a job. Like, I got to make sure if I'm going back to my old job, if I'm going to look for a new job, what am I going to do? And the company that I was working for no longer needed me as a tip. And so my agency had to find me a new place to work. And they found me a new place to work. And my aunt called me one day and she was like, I heard you moved. And I was like, no, I've just been working. And she's like, okay, well, you know, if you do move, give me a call. And I was like, okay, well, I will give you a call if I do move. And then later on that week, I was talking to one of my coworkers and I was like, I don't know if I really like this new, you know, assignment. And, but I don't really want to go home. And she said, Aaron, well, then don't go home. And like in my mind, that's always my solution. If you don't want to do it and you want to fight for it, if it's meant to be, God is going to make sure, you know, that your path is unblocked. But God also wants to just test you before, you know, to make sure you really want what you say you want. Like there has to be some sort of like, are you willing to fight for this? Because in any situation that you're willing to fight and it's worth the fight, God is going to assist you in some sort of way. So my coworker said, if you don't want to go home, then don't go home. And I just was like, why didn't I think of that this time? Like, that's usually my response. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that this time? (laughs) Because I I, I guess because I didn't need to think of it, right? So they find me a new assignment. And I'm kind of like teetering on the brink of again, like, do I want to stay here? Do I want to take this assignment? So, you know, there were some negotiations I had to make with my conversation and I was like, you know, I'm not going to do this long term. So I decided that I would get my resume fixed up and I started applying and I started applying and I started getting job interviews and all the interviews came on my off days because my commute is further than it was originally. I'm yeah. My commute is like an hour. So I'm like, I need to be able to interview on my off days and every interview was set up on my off days. Nice. No God, God setting it in motion, right? Motion, right? And each interview, like, was basically from my midpoint. Each interview was within the distance that I was willing to travel. Nice. So, you know, I went to the interviews, and I'm just like, okay, I don't think this was going to work out. I don't think this was going to work out. And there was a job that I really wanted to take. I really, 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 really wanted that job, but they were not willing to budge on the compensation. And because they were not willing to budge on the compensation, I had to be real with myself. Like, I have to live. And if I am going to make such a large move, you know, you're talking 2,000 plus miles away from my community, you know, from everybody that I know that I grew up with, I had to make sure that it was... Absolutely. It was going to be worthwhile. So the job that I have taken, the job that I have accepted, I'll say this, they kind of like, I interviewed for the job, everything was set up before Thanksgiving break, but they did not call me until after Thanksgiving break. And the lady called me, she said, I'm so sorry, I was supposed to do this last week. 
And I'm like, what was she supposed to do? And she goes, I just sent you your offer letter in, you know, in your email. Nice. And I'm like, okay. Nice. Woo! Okay. Nice. So, you know, what are we talking? And, you know, she starts to, you know, run over the benefit package with me. Um, I mean, and I just, I'm just like, okay, so is everything good? She's like, yeah, no, we ran your back. You worked it out. That good, like everything's all good. And she's like, when would you like to start? And I'm like, I have to still fulfill the obligations of my contract because my contract still has me contracted until the end of the year. And mm-hmm. she's like, well, when would you like to start? So I give her my start date and she said, that's absolutely no problem. I will send everything over. And then once you sign it, you know, we'll be good to go. So then, you know, you got to look for a place. And I'm not going to be long with it. I'm going to, you know, chop this up real quick. I'm going to look for a place. You know, it was a couple of places I wanted to, I, you know, wanted to live. One place I really, 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 really wanted to live. And I was just like, I'm going to have to work like overtime, like to just make sure like I'm good to, like, to live in this place. And I called my best friend. I sent her the video and she said, Aaron, do you really want to keep working overtime to pay to live? Like, or do you want to just like work your eight hours and go home? And I was like, yeah, I want to work my eight hours and go home. But it, I turned around and I'm like, in my head, I know me. If I had got accepted, I would have moved in that place. But they denied my application anyway. And now, you know, because that's acknowledging that God is real, right? Like, yep, look, yep. Uh, slow down. I got you the job. I got you across the country. Look, don't get too big for your britches. <laughs> but I got you a nice place nonetheless. So um, <laughs> I mean, through this whole process, I kid you not, in my morning tra- in my morning commute, when my commute is over, I'm not even lying to you, Wanda, excuse my language. I get up, when I get out of the car and I go to work, I yeah. go in the door, I go in the bathroom and I get on my knees in the in the work toilet. On, and I'm praying over the toilet like, God, thank you for keeping me safe. You know, I never know what's waiting for me, but I always expect you know, we always expect to get home at the end of the night. And that's even something that we take for granted, you know, but sure, we have to acknowledge sure. even in our daily commute, you know, even if sure. in whatever we have going on that, you know, God is real. And as long as we acknowledge God and we know that God's power moves within our lives that, you know, there's nothing that can stop us. There's nothing that I could go on and on, but I'm going to end this now. I knew that this was for me. I knew this move okay. was for me. And I'll just, I'll just leave it there. I'll leave it there. I, I'm hearing what Nadia said. It's a perfect fit, and it's, it's a perfect fit. It's, it, but but it's different for everyone. Yes, you know, and depending on what you're going through or what you're acknowledging him for, he makes that fit just perfect. Nadia, give us some insight on this. How do you know in you and your relationship with God that it's Him that has given you the direction? For me, I know when just a random church song pops in my head so one day I was real down I don't even remember about what but I was just having a terrible day and I'm in college so I'm by myself and I'm just like oh my goodness and so all of a sudden Jesus promise pops in my head you know and then I played it I'm praying I'm like oh my gosh please like please help me feel better like what is it what is it like give me the direction give me a path what all that and it was like a sunshiny day outside. Um, and so I had an errand to run. And then I went outside and I saw a rainbow. It had not been raining or anything like that. But then in the back of my head, I remember, what does a rainbow mean? God. So I'm just like, wow. Like, that's how I know. And um, that does happen a lot. Like a random song will pop in my head. And that's how I know God is trying to talk to me and trying to maybe give me a message, give me some direction, give me some lead way. But you know that was that was a significant example that day. Direction comes always with confirmation. Okay. And so yours was with a song. You know, Aaron's was his situation, and Brio's was with hers. Each one of us have, and that's where it comes from that personal relationship. How one parent talked to child A is not how that parent need to talk to child B. And God is the same way with us. How he needs to talk to Nadia and Bria, Aaron and Amari is totally different to get your attention and to confirm to you that he got you and he, he working it out. Oh, y'all on target. Come on, Mari. I ain't forgot you. Come on. Give me, give me what confirms to you that you got I God's really, dreams. 
I like how you said how God knows how to talk to us on an individual basis based off of our relationship. Because Mm -hmm. what I've noticed is that God will definitely disrupt like a part of my life that I might be focusing on. Like it might be a good, like, you know, it might be a good task, but it's not what he wants my attention or direction to go towards. Okay. And so um, like, for example, right now I work at a hospital. Uh, A lot of the times I was getting called to the hospital uh, as I got promoted because, uh, you know, people need to, you know, the staff need to be able to take care of people. And so my job is pretty uh, hands-on in that area, especially training people so they can uh, help the nurses with the software and technology there. And Mm -hmm. so I was realizing that um, the more and more that they are calling me in, my attention couldn't go towards things like school, family, things that I really do cherish, or even sometimes my relationship with him because it was just draining all the time. And so when I started to see things get um, a little bit disrupted, more and more hectic at work, I started to like just pause for a second and think, okay, stop what you're doing and like think, is God, God, is this really the direction that you want me to focus on? Or do I need to come back to you and focus on where you're taking me right now rather than where I want to go? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I've noticed that in those moments where I have to pause and just like look back to God, uh, I realize that his word never conflicts or contradicts itself. So like the word sometimes uh, thinking like to Aaron, uh, what he was saying earlier, like how much am I willing to fight for this? God will always give us something to rise up to. He'll show that he's with us uh, with David versus Goliath, David looking at a whole giant and he's just like, Nope, I already know that God is right behind me, to the side of me, in front of me, protecting me, covering me. And so having that same confidence and faith and trust in God and realizing that I can do that because he's consistent. He'll never change up. Man, word will never contradict or cause a conflict. He's consistent. You all have shared just your personal experiences with with, uh, this scripture and the depths of acknowledging God in your everyday life. And then what I love is, and for those who may watch this later, because we're shooting this on Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas to everybody and to Merry Christmas to all of you, Aaron, Amari, Nadia, and Bria. But um, we have to, we have to develop our personal relationship so we can hear his voice. And so then we, a voice, not just a scripture, his voice. And so then when he talks to us, we know that God has confirmed it. And I, I, you know, I'm borrowing Nadia's word. It's a perfect fit. Everything. I, I was talking to Aaron yesterday. Everything just falls in place and in line. Everything. It's just a perfect fit. And even, I like how, and Bria said it, even the things that you don't say out loud. <laughs> she used the car. You didn't even say the color. And God got a perfect fit. And so thank you all for your time. We're going to wrap it up right there. Talking about we'll, I'll reach out to you for the next pilot. We're going to do two pilots of this. And, and for me, with this here, with this pilot, it was a prayer thing. And, and you all know, come from the same church, same family. And I was in prayer on it. And I was like, okay, God, this is new. And I've done some new stuff at Mount Zion. It's caused some, some discomfort, right? But I, I really wanted to have an outreach ministry for the young adults. And just let's talk about the scripture, give some real life application to help people. And so um, this has been on my mind to do since probably June, July timeframe. And so here we are, Christmas. And so, um, and it just stayed in my spirit, just stayed in my spirit. And so before I even started this with y'all today, I prayed on it. I said, God, and I I reexamined the purpose why I was doing it and why it was on my heart to do and why I felt the Holy Spirit was leading me to do it. And the primary was just outreach for God's glory in the lives of his people and using you all as vessels to share and to communicate and others that may also, but it's not just about me to get others to partake in it because the season that we in right now, Unfortunately, web conferencing is it. Everybody ain't coming to church. Everybody ain't going to Bible study. And we need some real life dialogue so people can begin to understand Christ. And then understand that all of us, we have jobs, we go up and down and don't always work out. 
You don't, you know, I like how Nadia said, I was down and a song came to me. Christians have down moments. <laughs> it ain't always high in the sky, right? And so, and that's where Christ comes in and, and lifts us up. I want to close with the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope and in a final outcome. So God's plan, when we look at this Proverbs 3 and 6 and we acknowledge him, we couple it with verse 5, is, is all good. And it's a perfect fit for us. And we have some obstacles. We have some setbacks. We have some down moments. We have some challenges. But if we acknowledge him and we stick with him, there is no conflict of his word and there's always peace. So as I say all the time, when I'm closing out uh, my studies online, I always say, God loves you and I love all y'all in Jesus Christ. So thank y'all, Bria, Aaron, Mari, Nadia. Thank y'all. I'll be thank reaching you. out. Okay. Y'all have a good one. Be safe and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. 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 A happy holiday. Look, look at the preacher kid. Come on now. Come on. Listen, I'll sing the Merry Christmas song. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sing the Merry Christmas. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And they said that his name was Jesus. Jesus. Bye. Bye. Bye.